everybody, it's Michael Martin. Thanks for being here. So I get a lot of emails from folks who are frustrated about what they're doing and they're ready to throw in the towel and shape and turn things around. They want to fix things. They get frustrated that they're not making money. They put a lot of faith into a certain technique or chart pattern. Did a little okay, but in the end, it doesn't leave them fulfilled. They're not making money. They're frustrated. And even in a short window of time, like a month, they're ready to change gears. And so you have to understand that when you change gears, you're kind of getting the worst of it. One of the things that Michael Marcus showed to me is that you could find five, you know, we named like five great traders that we knew who were all legendary. And we said, okay, imagine if you, tr you know, could trade like any one of them. The idea was to, you know, find one role model. <clears throat> and certainly he was a role model for me. But then the next would be, if you wanted to trade like Ed Sakota Monday, Michael Marcus Tuesday, Bruce Kovner Thursday, you would effectively get the worst of all of them. Because what happens is everyone has a certain style that's unique to them and as unique to yours. Yours is as unique to you as your fingerprint. And so what happens is every style of trading will in fact, in fact have a drawdown. <clears throat> What's random when you look at the simulators is the start date. A lot of them will default to January 1st. Well, guess what? That's not the first day of trading for a lot of people. When's the first day of trading? Well, it's probably the second day or the, the day that the account is funded. So that could be June 13th. It could be August 2nd. It could be September 25th. doesn't matter what it is, but you're not going to typically trade on a calendar year basis. So with each of those styles and techniques and tactics, right, and emotional intelligence, <clears throat> each of the people might have drawdowns that occur at different periods of time. They might have different magnitudes. They obviously all know how to make money because they've done so. But the idea is that if you're going to try to do that, you really have to pick one and stick with it. Why? Well, if you remember, there's a paper out there that I think Tom Basso wrote that said you how you want to buy a CTA when they're in a drawdown. Because that's kind of like pull, buying on a pullback. If you have a commodity trading advisor, or anyone for that matter, who's trading a purely systematized, not a single discretionary trade in that system, look at what happens. You trade it, markets are amenable, you harvest some cash, markets kind of turn, you still follow your rules, you could get into a drawdown, right? But then you recover, so when you think about it over a 20-year period of time, you're going to have an equity curve where there's spikes, troughs, spikes, troughs. And then basically, the idea was that as long as the manager followed his or her or their rules day after day after day, you could actually buy the CTA on the dip because you know that the drawdown is within model. You know, hypothetically, anything that has a 20-something percent compounded annual growth rate is probably going to have a 20% drawdown certainly 15%. So then you have to say to yourself, okay, if the manager's in a 10% drawdown and they're purely systematic, that we know in model that it can get to 2022, they're down 10, the average is 15. You could take a, take a flyer and invest money with that CTA while they're in the drawdown because the recovery part is kind of on its way, right? The bottom of whatever that drawdown is. The problem is, is that if you're doing everything on a discretionary basis, and one day you want to trade like Tony Saliba <clears throat> and do options and butterflies and broken wing strategies, no problem. But then the next day comes and you want to trade, you know, your half a million dollar account like it's two million because you're afforded four times leverage with day trading buying power. You know, that's a different mindset. And I'm not saying that you can't get there, but that's years of training and mental preparation and insight on the marketplace. So... I think if you're going to system hop, which is a way of saying, I'm going to trade different styles and different techniques, at least at the beginning, you're going to get the worst of it, not the best of it. It might seem like being flexible is a good thing, but what ends up happening is you can't predict where your trading style is in the market in an ex ante, excuse me, in an ex post after the fact kind of understanding. So the only way you can do that is to actually put the trades on. Now, it would take a special type of intelligence to understand when someone's model is going out of favor. And that's probably not a skill a person has within, say, the first three years. Maybe there's a, a super sensitive person who has great feel, could be the case. In my experience, those people are very few and far between. How do I know? Well, because I'm one of those guys. And it still took me 
quite a long time to eliminate the garbage that was taking up my energy and my time so that I could focus on doing one thing and doing it very, very well. Nowadays, yeah, okay, you might be able to shorten the curve because when I started, there was no internet, there was no wireless technology, there was no discords. Anyway, that's the world that we live in. You get an 18-year-old kid that doesn't know his ass in the hole of the ground, you have 90,000 members in a discord, and you got a guy with 35 years of experience of <laughs> knocks, and you can get 1,300 followers on your channel. So that's the way the world works. So that's my, my, my thesis is pick one thing and get really, really good at it and don't start hopping from system to system because you get discouraged. How do you know? Well, you got to look inward. You know, you really have to look inward and think, did you give the system or the rules that you had wanted to trade the, at first, did you give them enough time? Because just because you went into a drawdown doesn't necessarily mean that the rules are crappy or that the system isn't worth following. You know, we talked about that, right? Someone comes in, they don't do any research, they come in, they put 25% of their countdown on one name, they make a bunch of money and they're like, trading stuff's easy. When, you know, they just got rewarded for what we would call bad behavior. So it's possible for you to do hours and hours of work and preparation and put trades on and finish the, the week down one and a half percent. That doesn't mean it's a, that it's not a system to follow. That's the hard part. So you really have to investigate and manage your, your own expectations when you look at what's the, what is the behavior that went on with that system, right? So those are my two thoughts. Don't want to go on and on and on, but there's a lot of ways to look at it. This is certainly one way. There's probably others. Thanks for being here, folks. Please like and subscribe. Do you want to take a minute, leave a comment? That would be helpful. If you want to reach out through the blog, you can also suggest a topic that I'll cover here in the future if I think there's anything I could say that's halfway intelligent that's worth your time. Thanks a lot for being here, folks. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, everybody, thanks for being here. Please take a minute, like, and subscribe to the show. You could also leave a comment. I don't have all the answers, so it's good to get some feedback. Also, if you would like to support the show, check out the links below. You can get the free audiobook of The Inner Voice of Trading uh, and also information about the course that I teach with Victor Spirandio. Thanks for being here, folks. I'll see you tomorrow.